Hi, everyone, and welcome to our sixth devotion in our online devotion series. Today, we're reading and studying through James chapter 1, verse 19 to 21. So if you do have your Bible, we're going to be reading from the ESV, as we have been these last couple of sessions together. And before we do that, I'm going to pray for us. So how about you join me as I pray? Uh, dear Heavenly Father, uh, guys, we come to your word. Uh, we pray, God, you'll help us to listen well uh, to you as you speak to us through your word. Help us, God, to apply the things that we read today. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me read for us James chapter 1, verse 19 to 21. Know this, my beloved brothers, that every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Well, if you remember, uh, we said early on that all of James chapter one speaks about hardships and suffering in the life of Christians. Right? That is the theme of all of James chapter one. It's about the trials in the Christian life. And you remember in our last passage, James spoke about uh, God's word of truth that brought us to saving faith in verse 18. And so now James continues this theme of God's word in verses 19 to 26. But in particular, he asks, what role does God's word play in how we face the various trials in our life? So as Christians, we know that we'll face many trials in our life. But how does God's word help us? in the midst of all of those trials. That's sort of the issue that James is addressing here in these verses. And if you look at verses, uh, look at verse 19, uh, here is James's advice to the Christians. He says to them that when it comes to the role of God's word in the midst of our trials, we should be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. The first thing James tells Christians to do when facing trials is to be quick to hear God's word. To put it another way, we need to listen well to God's word. You see, listening well is very important. Uh, in our technological age, listening well has become very, very difficult now. Um, when we were allowed to meet together in groups of people, which I know seems like a whole lifetime ago, but when we could meet physically in groups of people, it's not unusual to see some people on their phones while other people are talking. But it seems to be the, the modern social setting now in any group of people. Some people are talking, some people are distracted on their phones. Uh, even for me now these days, I've developed a very bad habit when it comes to Zoom in particular. So because of lockdown, uh, all of our life is now played out on Zoom. So I've got a lot of experience, a lot of time on Zoom. But I've noticed I've, I've developed a very bad habit when it comes to Zoom. I don't know if I'm the only one. Maybe you can uh, sympathize with me here. So what happens is that as people are talking on Zoom, I am simultaneously surfing the net with half of my attention on my screen and half of my attention on what the person is saying. Needless to say, I'm not listening very well to them. Well, through God's word, we know that God speaks to us. So the question is not whether God speaks, but rather, are we listening? You see, if I'm with a group of people, but I'm distracted on my phone, I might hear some words and hear some noises, but I'm not really listening well. My full attention is not given to the person who is speaking. And I believe that this is why there is a difference between Bible reading and Bible listening. You see, Bible reading can be simply reading the words on a page, but having them go one ear and out the other. But Bible listening is pausing to reflect and to think and to understand the words that we're reading. Big difference between Bible reading and Bible listening. Well, James says that we need to listen well to God's word because the better we listen, the less we speak and the slower we get angry. Okay, the better we listen, then the less we speak 
and the slower we get angry. What makes you angry? Bad drivers, waiting in a long queue, slow internet speed, people not obeying the public health orders. What makes you angry? For the Christians that James is writing to, what makes them angry are the trials that they were facing in their life. You see, we know that things in life for them were very, very difficult and things were not going their way. And when things don't go their way, they react by complaining and getting angry at their situation and at God. You know, if I'm really honest with you, that describes me right down to a T. The thing that gets me angry the most is when things don't go my way. When things get hard and I'm inconvenienced or I, I feel a bit of discomfort, I react by getting angry. Angry at myself, angry at people, angry at the situation, angry at God for letting all of this happen. I get angry so easily because of the trials that come my way. But the reason for these Christians that they were complaining and angry is because they weren't listening well to God's word. James says that if they were really listening well to God's word, then they would have known that their trials are actually testing their faith in Jesus, which produces steadfastness, which makes them perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If they were really listening well to God's word, they would have known this and they would have counted it with all joy instead of complaining and getting angry. I think the same can be said of me as well. The reason why I get angry at my child is, is, is because I think it's somehow God punishing me or God trying to make my life difficult. But that's not what he's doing. He's actually using it for my good, to build up my faith and trust in Jesus. If I know that, if I listen well to God's word when it said that, I wouldn't get angry. I'd actually be joyful and be trusting in God. And so you see here that the key to being slow to complain with our words and being slow to getting angry in the midst of hardship is to listen well to God's word. God's word says that our trials are his good and perfect gift to us. God's word says our trials produce steadfastness, while anger does not produce the righteousness of God. Listening well to God's word helps us to overcome the sins of grumbling and bitterness in our heart toward God and others. And so we see here that God's word is very powerful. Uh, powerful to save us and powerful to transform us as well. Uh, the Christians that James was writing to were saved because, as he said in verse 18, they heard the word of truth. Well, now James encourages them to keep listening to God's word, which has been implanted in them, so that all filthiness and rampant wickedness will be removed from them. Listening well to God's word not only removes grumbling and anger from our hearts, but it removes all kinds of evil and wickedness from us. God's word cleanses us from all moral filth. God's word washes us from all spiritual stains. The more we listen well to God's word, the more we experience God's deep transforming power in our lives. So if we want to face our various trials with a deep trust and a deep joy in Christ, it begins with listening well when God speaks to us in his word. And as you know, as we've done in the last couple of weeks, I want to end our time by asking you a few questions that you might go away and pray over and think about. And let me share with you three questions. First, how do you think you can better listen to God's word? Two, do you get angry when trials come your way? And how can God's word help you deal with your anger? And three, in light of this passage, what's one thing you can praise God for and what's one thing you can ask God for? I hope this has been encouraging for you and I hope that you'll be blessed. So until next time, see you then.